Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I do want to talk about the match between Barcelona and Dinamo Kiev. Barcelona is going to be hosting Dinamo Kiev at the Camp Nou and this will be for a Champions League match. Right now, Barcelona is in a very delicate situation. Barcelona right now, they have to get out the group because right now within the group, alongside with Bayern Munich, Benfica and also Dinamo Kiev, of course, we are in this group and we are in last place. Barcelona is in last place and we have a total of zero points. So looking at this very delicate situation that Barcelona Barcelona is in. Barcelona must win in this match. There is no excuses. This is Dinamo Kiev. Like, much respect towards Dinamo Kiev. We know that they are very good within their own league, but Barcelona is Barcelona. Barcelona is a team that has to be moving away from the group stages and advance towards the next stage every season. And so anything less than a win for Barcelona, the alarms are going to be on, and especially for Ronald Koeman, because after what we have witnessed, which was a 3-0 loss against Bayern Munich, a 3-0 loss against Benfica, a win against Dinamo Kiev, Kiev is mandatory. So before we go into that lineup and discuss just how exactly Barcelona could beat Dinamo Kiev and how we should expect Ronald Koeman to place his starting 11, I do want to talk about something very important and that is going to be about Ansu Fati's renewal because we do have some massive updates regarding his new contract with Barcelona. So it has been said, according to Adria Albets, Ansu Fati's new contract will be until 2027 and he will be having a 1 billion release clause, which is some massive news, my friends. The fact that Ansu Fati is going to be receiving a contract that will take him until 2027. That is a longer contract than Pedri's because Pedri's contract will be until 2026 and the fact that Ansu Fati is also receiving a 1 billion euro release clause. Again, this just shows just how much Barcelona actually value these youth players. And it has also been said that the agreement is very close. The only reason why this process is accelerating, well, it is because according to the same reporter, he has also stated that Mateo Aleman personally went to Porto to meet with Jorge Mendes and he paved the way for the agreement over Ansu Fati's renewal and that is the reason why this renewal has fast-tracked because a couple of hours ago many were saying that Ansu Fati's contract was not going to come into an agreement until maybe after the international break in November but Barcelona and the other executives they have been working very very hard because they want to renew these players as soon as possible and according to Albert Rogue it has also been reported that Ansu Fati is ready to give up some of his financial and economic claims in order for him to renew with the club of his life. The salary within his contract is said to be increased season by season. There were many clubs like Manchester United and also Liverpool and other clubs out there in Europe that were actually approaching Jorge Mendes and asking what is the situation looking like between Ansu Fati and FC Barcelona? Is it possible that we could grab potentially Ansu Fati and take him away from Barcelona? But Ansu Fati has made it very clear towards his agent, towards the club, which is Barcelona, that he only wants Barcelona and he only wants to stay at this club for a very long time. And so again, this is a deal that should be done. Of course, right? Ansu Fati is going to be having the longest deal at this club. Many did expect Ansu Fati's contract to be shorter in length compared to Pedri's. But Barcelona are deciding that they want Ansu Fati to be the focal point of this project that they want to build. And it is a very practical thing to do because every time we look at Ansu Fati on the field, seeing what he does on the field and how he does it, every performance is just another way of him saying that this is also another reason why you should extend the contract. And you know who's the real MVP? MVP of this whole thing. That is Mateo Aleman. Like props to Mateo Aleman for doing what he did for this renewal of Ansu Fati. The fact that he has been dealing with all of these players, negotiating the contracts like Pedri, Ansu, Araujo, Gavi, Minguesa, Nico Gonzalez, all of these players. The fact that he has been dealing with all of this and the fact that we have also just heard that the only reason why this renewal has been fast tracked, it is because he traveled to Porto to meet with Jorge Mendes. Like yes, Mateo Aleman, you are the MVP. We appreciate you. We thank you. And also another good thing to know from this is is that one of the main reasons on why Barcelona as a whole, as a collective, have been trying to work on renewing many of these youth players, it is because they want to know the foundation of this club. They want to know who is going to be within this foundation that we want to build, within this sporting project that we want to build for the next five to six years. Because once you do have that foundation, once you do have that idea on who those players may be, then you're going to be having another idea on what areas to strengthen. Like for example, if Barcelona cannot come to an agreement with Dembélé, then Barcelona in the summer of 2022 or maybe in January 2022 they're going to be saying okay we renewed these players we couldn't renew that player so how could we strengthen that area what players do we need to grab from out there in Europe in order to strengthen this position so that is why they do want to renew these players extremely early it is because they want answers as soon as possible to understand where Barcelona will be standing in a couple of months and many are going to be questioning okay Kevin what about Gavi and Araujo what is up with those players well it does say here according to the ever reliable Fabrizio Romano he has stated that 
that after the contract renewals of Pedri and Asufati, the likes of Gavi and Araujo will be next. Their new deals will be discussed soon. As for Dembélé, he is also on the list, but his situation around a new deal is not clear as of yet. But now I do want to slowly transition to the match between Barcelona and Dinamo Kiev, and I want to talk about the press conference very quickly because Kuman has shown his excitement regarding Ansu Fati's renewal with FC Barcelona, and this is what he had to say about Ansu Fati. I know they're close to agreeing a new contract, and it's big news for Barcelona because we're talking about someone that can mark the club's future. So this is basically Kuman pushing Ansu Fati's name, saying that Ansu is the player to lead Barcelona. Ansu Fati is going to be the image of Barcelona's brand new face. So even he is very hyped up, like many of us Barcelona fans, and it's very exciting. But moving on towards Dinamo Kiev, right? We know that Dinamo Kiev is a very strong team. We know that they are very strong within their own league, but that does not mean that Barcelona cannot beat them. Barcelona has beaten Dinamo Kiev before in the previous season. Barcelona have every right and have every opportunity. They have every answer to dismantle this team at the Camp Nou. And what makes this game so different, if you were to compare it to the match between Barcelona and Bayern Munich and Barcelona and Benfica, is that Barcelona officially do have more options, more answers, more players who have returned from injury. Because if we were to look at the squad list here, we can see that Kun Aguero is back. He has returned. We did not have him going up against Benfica or Bayern Munich. We can see that Alejandro Balde has returned from injury. We can see that Ansu Fati has also returned and we did not have Ansu Fati in that match against Bayern Munich or Benfica. And then we also have Felipe Coutinho who has also recently returned. So you can see that overall this Barcelona squad has strengthened. Now keep in mind that there is going to be two players that will not be here who are considered as very important players for Barcelona's back line. And that is going to be Ronald Araujo and Eric Garcia. Araujo will not be in this game because he is currently injured. It has been reported that Araujo could return after the match or maybe during the match against Real Madrid. As for Eric Garcia, he is not going to be playing in this game, not because of a injury, but because he was suspended in the previous Champions League match. So this lineup that we are going to be predicting is going to be very difficult to predict because we do not know what that defensive line is going to look like. And I believe that overall, I do think that Koeman is going to have a very tough time on trying to understand what could be the correct lineup now seeing that we are going to be missing these two center backs. But here's the one thing that I do want to really point out because after seeing what we have seen throughout this whole year of 2021, I have came to this conclusion. And this is something that I have not said within YouTube so far, but I am going to be saying it here. I do not think that Kuman is not capable to execute a 4-3-3 system that can press, that can attack a 4-3-3 system where they can move the ball fast and create multiple triangles around the field. I just do not think that Kuman is capable to do that like how Lucho does it or how Guardiola does it. Many of us were asking Kuman to do that, but I just do not think that he is capable enough. And even if he was, I just feel like he is not interested in implementing those ideas. Because the only thing that we have been seeing coming from Kuman's Barcelona is that he wants his squad to sit back on the field, create some sort of mid block, because that is what we have been seeing going up against Valencia and Bayern Munich and PSG earlier this year, because he believes that that is the only way this Barcelona squad could win. That is his football. That is just simply the only thing that he does believe in. So we are no longer going to be asking for Kuman to do this specific thing and for Barcelona to portray this type of image because he is simply either not capable enough or he believes that that type of football just does not interest him or he believes that that type of football does not bring results. So this is going to be the Barcelona that we're going to have to deal with as long as Kuman is under the management. It's going to be a team that defends in a mid block and wait for the opposition to lose the ball and then we counter attack. That is the Barcelona that we are going to be seeing. So if that's going to be the case, if that's really going to be the Barcelona that we are going to be seeing until Kuman leaves this club, then I do expect the lineup and the formation to look like this, like what we are seeing here in a 4-4-2 system where Minguesa will be as the right back, Gerard Piquet and Frankie de Jong will be the center back duo. No, I do not see Lenglet nor Umtiti starting alongside Gerard Piquet. And then we're going to be having Jordi Alba as the left back. As for the four midfielders, I do expect to see Sergio Dest as a right wing back, Busquets and Gavi as the central midfielders and Felipe Coutinho on the left wing of that four man midfield. As for the front two, I do expect to see Ansu Fati and Memphis Depay. Now, I do want to point out four different things. Point number one, Minguesa is going to be starting in this game because if me if Minguesa does not start, then that would mean that Sergio Roberto is going to have to start in that position. And I just do not see Sergio Roberto starting in this game. But of course, right, it's Kuman. Kuman is going to want to use Sergio Roberto, but I'm going to speak it into existence and say that Minguesa will be starting as the right back for Barcelona. Point number two, because Minguesa will be starting in that position, I do expect Sergio Dest to be playing as a right wing back, basically seeing what we have been seeing coming from Dest in the past three to four games, both international and club wise. Sergio Dest as a right wing back, he plays tremendously well. Moving on to point number three, I do not expect Ansu Fati to play throughout the full match. He is a player that we have to be very careful with. We cannot force 
force him to play 90 minutes automatically like right after him coming off a 10 to 11 month injury the one player that i do expect to be subbed in for Ansu Fati is going to be Sergio Aguero maybe around the 60th or 65 minute and then moving on to point number four this is a team that can really pull off great results based off what Ronald Koeman does demand coming from his system from his players his version of FC Barcelona if we can field these 11 players on the field these are the players that can do exactly that that can bring the best results possible and I do believe that if Barcelona are disciplined enough to defend very well right according to Ronald Koeman then we could come out this match with three points but that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona pre-match preview and daily news thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are new here welcome to the channel please like subscribe comment and I will see you guys in the next video